GB News, it's GB News. You got the other broadcaster shaking in the shoes. It's been a real joy having you on. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Thanks for uh, reflecting about all that. GB News for UK views. Political debate with the greatest interviews. Space can be used in other ways uh, to, to cause conflict. Uh, viruses and things like this blocking communication spacecraft, you know, literally killing them. Quickly, you mentioned a virus there, and of course the big virus we've been dealing with is the COVID-19, which originated from China. It's how worried should we be that China has now is now doing this? Because a lot of people don't trust China right now. Very quickly. No, no, no. I, I don't imagine it's that type of virus. I'm talking about a computer-based. For the underserved and the unheard what's the word GB News and now for those whose favourite thing is the weather here's the weather GB News what was supposed to be the UK's answer to Fox News, but turned out more like the UK's answer to awkward Thanksgiving dinners with your uncle and aunt on the brink of a divorce. Do you know, if it is Christmas, then tomorrow's my birthday, because I'm a Boxing Day baby, so you know, hurrah. Every, isn't it amazing? Every story we've done, somehow, it's all about you. Anyone for parsnips? It was started by BBC's Scottish stalwart Andrew Neil, who has worked as one of the highest paid journalists at the BBC for 25 years. You are the worst person I've ever interviewed. No, no, it's basically off it. with their heads, disappearing. David, thank take you for away. being with us. Infowars.com. We have an idiot on the program will not today. Stop. You Coming will not up stop in just freedom. 20 minutes. You will not stop the republic. Humanity is awakening. Infowars.com. No, you got. During which he had to appear non-biased. He even convinced haunted ventriloquist dummy Ben Shapiro that he was a lefty in this now infamous interview. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh, is this so hard for you? Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> Mr. Shapiro, Seriously, I, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let's move on. Comedy Gold. Andrew Neil owns a successful right-wing publication and was once editor for the Sunday Mirror which published claims that heterosexual AIDS is a myth and likes to push his climate scepticism on Twitter. Oh, it's snowing! That must mean global warming is a myth! Get your fracking machines out, boys! Don't look at the graph! Nothing to see here! Don't, don't look at any of the graph. Anyway, despite this, the BBC allowed him to present primetime political programming on their platform for 25 years until he left complaining that the BBC is too left wing. He then started up his new project, GB News, which stands for, obviously, Gammon Boomer News. Welcome to the launch of GB News, Britain's news channel dedicated to covering the news that matters to you and to giving a voice to those who felt sidelined or even silenced in our great national debates. We won't forget what the B stands for in our title. We will puncture the pomposity of our elites and expose their growing promotion of cancel culture. Social mobility and a fair chance in life for all will matter more to us than the wasteland to nowhere that is identity politics. And if you want fake news, lies, disinformation, distortion of the facts, conspiracy theories, then GB News is not for you. The woke karate. The woke fest. The woke. The whole wokeness. They're not PC. They don't believe in wokery. The problem with wokeness. The woke movement. The woke fest. It's a classic wokey type. Move towards woke. They particularly woke. Indoctrinated by ultra woke. In the age of woke. Woke. The woke. 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 Wokeness gone mad. So GB News offers to fight through the woke karate rhetoric so prevalent in today's mainstream media with opinion based on hard facts, which is of course why they regularly bring on a body language analyst. Judy James, who from what I can discern has absolutely no qualifications, analysed exactly why Richard Branson took his shoes off in a recent interview on The Late Show and what this represents. Don't forget, this is news that matters to you. He was shoeless uh, d d during the interview. I mean, 
This is quite shocking, is it not? What, what was he trying to prove? He's been up in space, but who cares? Because he, he appeared with bare feet. That's all anybody's talking about. It's his feet, Judy. Not his cock. Oh, and don't worry, fine GB News viewers, we found a way to shoehorn a criticism of Prince Harry into this nonsensical shit show of a segment. Of course, we wouldn't let you down. Listen, Dan, don't get into this, and I'm definitely not going to, but this is the new status symbol for billionaires, evidently, to go bare feet. Do you remember Harry uh, removed oh, his yes. shoes recently? It's one of these things, that it, it's linked with mindfulness, uh, guru spiritual side of them, the, the, the free, I mean, Harry's free spirit, um, uh, hippie yoga stuff. We love it when a man who has recently been open about going to therapy to take care of his mental health because his wife was recently bullied almost to death by the same press that killed his mother is dismissed as hippie yoga stuff. And you were part of that, Dan. So, to my money, it implies that they've got the kind of cleaners that they can afford. We'll go around their homes with a, a, a magnifying glass and a pipette, picking up every little grain of dirt or, or anything that might damage their feet. Um, sadly, it's also been linked to the past with, with death. And if you want conspiracy theories, then GB News is not for you. Also, Harry got criticised for having dirty feet in that photo, actually, so... Which is it? Are the elite's feet too clean or too dirty? Which is it, Judy? Why are we talking about this, Judy? Why? So, Andrew Neil has his own primetime slot dubbed Woke Watch, or as I like to call it, Old man yells at grossly exaggerated caricature of the left which doesn't exist in the real world because it's too hard to talk about the real issues at stake. Here he is yelling about the woke left deciding that maths is racist. Pretty much everything is racist these days, even mathematics. Yes, mathematics. It's an education program that tells American teachers not to push students to find the correct answers to maths problems because doing so promotes white supremacy. The program hails from California, naturally. This is drivel of a high order. Uh, hands up anyone who doesn't think that the correct answer to two plus two is four. This type of content is dangerous when you present one extremely ill-informed side of the arguments with no links to sources in the description and no one else there in the studio with you to challenge your claims. The audience is eating it up and I get it, it looks tasty. It's comforting to be told that you're the sane one and everyone on the other side of the argument is emotional and out of control and having a tantrum and letting their feelings take precedence over fat. Personally, I love watching videos of MAGA idiots performing Olympic grade mental gymnastics in order to justify their prejudice and shoehorn facts into their narratives. He didn't do anything. Didn't do anything They're right? very well said. Well, that's it, right? He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. So we should let everybody testify. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. No. But I'm fully aware that these people do not represent that side of the argument as a whole, yet what Andrew Neil is attempting to do is discount the left as some sort of screaming, demonstrative, virtue signalling mob. And this isn't even something that's going on in our country, so I'm not really sure how this is relevant to GB News, but it's a nice clickable title and it makes the left look fucking insane. But speaking like this is just insulting to your audience. He's basically assuming that they won't be able to understand the idea that nuances of racism could be prevalent in different ways in different school subjects, and this will just be, I'm sure, one of many investigations into different school subjects, so teachers can fully understand how race and cultural backgrounds could affect learning and give some students an unfair advantage over others. Well, I assume black kids are naturally bad at maths, there's no evidence for that. Actually, it's a pretty racist assumption to make in the first place. So he goes on to say that the programme is racist because it's implying that ethnic minority children will need extra help to perform at the same level as white children. Yet if you look at the data it shows that far more qualifications in mathematics are disproportionately awarded to white students, implying that for decades, for some reason, white children have outperformed ethnic minorities in this subject. So 
Isn't it racist for you to imply that this is their own fault in some way? You're implying that there's something intrinsic within being a minority, not caused by the environment in which they learn, which has caused these children to not perform at the same level. That's racist. And if you really want to have a discussion about this, perhaps you would talk to someone about this who's educated on the subject in your studio instead of interviewing someone who already agrees with you and yelling at your audience that two plus two equals four. Now I can see why people have started calling this GBBs. The workbook or the walkbook would be more accurate. <laughs> teachers to identify and challenge the way that maths is used to uphold capitalist, imperialist and racist views. Shall we expand that quote? Upholding the idea that there are always right and wrong answers perpetuate objectivity as well as fear of open conflict. Some math problems may have more than one right answer and some may not have a solution at all, depending on the content and the context. The limit does not exist. And when the focus is only on getting the right answer, the complexity of the mathematical concepts and reasoning may be underdeveloped, missing opportunities for deep learning. So to me, that sounds like stuff that would probably help all students, not just ones from ethnic minorities, but kids from all backgrounds. Learning to be appreciative of the different ways in which students think instead of being steadfast on one correct method encourages creative thinking in the classroom, I would have thought, and benefits society as a whole as we enrich the talent pool of problem solvers in the workplace. But all you can hear in your fucking smooth ass septuagenarian blancmange brain is Mass is racist! Oh my god, they're saying mass is racist now! This is a tactic that he's adopted to manipulate his audience, which he seems to have taken from his sexy bow tie daddy Tucker Carlson, who, for instance, at a time when legislations were being pushed through Congress, resulting in huge tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires, rather than telling his middle and working class audience about this event, Tucker was yelling them about the woke lefts. Racist trees. And as much as I hate to say it, this is why Good Morning Britain was good when Piers Morgan was on there before he stormed off. I disagree with that motherfucker on pretty much everything, but he represents the opinions of a lot of people and there was always someone else there to shout back in his stupid face. I think what you've just said about the Queen is disgusting. I think it's unbelievable. The Queen is 94 years old, right? Her so husband... What? But this is like watching an old man standing in the shower practicing arguments in his head for a conversation that's never happened against a person that's never existed. I know you're getting a little bit old and senile now, but you aren't in the shower, Andrew Neil. Those are TV cameras, not bottles of shampoo. We also had other excellent segments such as two cis white men discussing trans women in sports. This is coming. This is coming. Women's dis sport is on the verge of destruction because they're all so woke, Nigel, and they I all know. want to do what they think is the right thing. There is a silent majority that is scared to speak. And in other news, we have this YouTuber on the best way to pour beer, and we have two cats discussing the tragic decline of the bird population and what we can do about it. And are dogs really man's best friend, or do they have a secret plot to kill you? Anyway, GB News in the meantime was becoming a bit of a punching bag for leftist Twitter as they reveled in the various technical failings due to the investors pushing for the programming to start before the studio was fully ready. A day of action is being held by the UK travel. Sorry, I'm laughing because it's like banging. It's <laughs> They suffered from various spelling mistakes. One of their guests was swallowed by the gaping void. They seemed to respond to the very real threat of being silenced and censored by the mainstream media by turning their mic gains up to maximum. We are passionate about supporting our veterans. And Falsely accusing her of transphobia. 60 million pounds investment, guys. 60 million pounds. Unfortunately, after the initial interest, viewing figures steadily decreased and Andrew Neil decided to take a break from the channel less than two weeks after it had launched and toddled off back to his home in the south of France. And he still hasn't returned, but the biggest fail was yet to come. On the 15th of July, GB News's anti-woke 
anti-council culture rhetoric dove up its own ass so far it officially swallowed itself whole a discussion surrounding the england football team taking the knee sparked a debate and presenter guto hari took the knee <gasps> live on air in the studio gb news viewers were not happy lodged complaints and subsequently tuned out so much so that their viewing figures at one point literally dropped to zero and have not fully recovered since jeez when the right cancel something they really do cancel it don't they the woke karate should be taking notes the zero figure was recorded the day after harry took the knee which led to widespread fury and social media from gb news viewers who pledged to stop watching the recently launched right-wing current affairs channel making accusations that it had sold out and gone woke secretly harbored marxist values or was in favor of black lives matter please google what marxism is Please, just someone Google it. GB News then responded on their favorite website, Twitter, by posting three contradictory tweets in a row. GB News stands four square against racism in all its forms. We do not have a company line on taking the knee. Some of our guests have been in favor, some against. All are anti-racist. Some are just anti-anti-racist. We have editorial standards that all GB News journalists uphold. On Tuesday, a contributing presenter took the knee live on air and this was an unacceptable breach of our standards. We let both sides of the argument down by oversimplifying a very complex issue. Guto Harry left soon after. GB News sustained lower viewing figures and at one point it was reported that they clocked in lower than the Welsh language version of Paw Patrol. Having seen Andrew Neil's little mathematics lesson though, perhaps they wouldn't do too badly trying to capture the on the five demographic. Two plus two is four. This is drivel of a high order. Two plus two is four. Mathematics is racist these days. Soon after, our favourite relatable man of the people, Nigel Farage, was parachuted in to do CPR on GB News. I know that virtually none of you have ever done a proper job in your lives. After leading the country out of the EU and then abandoning it, he then had a brief stint sniffing Trump's farts. This is the single most resilient and bravest person I have ever met in my life. But then when he didn't get chief fart sniffer role, nor did he get a gig on Fox News, Nigel returned to the UK with his tail between his legs and he has since been the racist old man screaming on the porch. The porch of the UK, which is the White Cliffs of Dover. And he's been trying to scare desperate refugees away with his angry pink face. So GB News gave Nigel a primetime slot, of course. And it's been rumoured that this may be the reason that Andrew Neil has not since returned. Yeah, we don't only have uh, Gen Z drama on YouTube, TV boomer drama happens too. It's sweatier, pinker, and there's no apology videos. Faraja's show, or as they have seemed to call it on set, Prage, has a segment called Talking Pint. Cheers, Anne. Cheers. Now. Brexit. To Brexit. I'm sorry, Nigel, are you, are you stealing my brand now? and I picked up the phone and hello, Anne Whittingham here. So I stood to attention, obviously. Soon after GB News began broadcasting, various corporations pulled out of advertising on the channel, citing that it did not align with their values. This was apparently in response to a group called Stop Funding Hate, which campaigns large companies to pull their advertising out of what they deem as hateful publications and broadcasts. But it's pretty fucking redundant anyway. It's pointless pulling funds from a media company which basically has access to a bottomless pit of money. It's a bit like taking away one of James Corden's 27 Emmy and Tony Awards. He doesn't deserve it and he'll probably have a temper tantrum but there's plenty more where that came from and in the long run it'll probably only make him stronger and thrust even harder in the face of justice. Wow. The people behind GB News are not 
specifically looking for profit. They're looking for a shift in ideology. These billion dollar investment firms think in terms of decades. Losing ads from IKEA and Grolsch beer are very short term setbacks and they can just be replaced with other companies that don't care as much in the long run. So where did that 60 million pound and possibly more investment come from? Are you ready for some late stage capitalist hellscape fun? Late stage capitalist hellscape fun. Late stage capitalist hellscape fun with me. The GB News project was backed by Legatum, an investment firm which has backed some of the more extreme pro-Brexit free market think tanks of recent years, and Sir Paul Marshall, a hedge fund manager who is a vocal Brexit supporter and donated £100,000 to the Vote Leave group during the 2016 EU referendum campaign. Legatum Institute has direct ties to the Coke Network, as well as a neoconservative conservative financier who supports publications with a history of white supremacism and ideological opposition to the Black Lives Matter movement. Legatum Institute has received donations from the Koch Institute, which some of you may know are a family of oil billionaires with a history in funding anti-climate change individuals and think tanks. In 2018, the Legatum Institute also received $10,000 from the Robert F. Agostinelli Foundation. Agostinelli is another right-wing billionaire because Lord knows we don't have enough of those who supports neoconservative causes and once described the left as a cancer that needs to be eradicated. He was previously a donor to the presidential campaign of Trump's later lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. And thank fuck that didn't go anywhere. Nasty, filthy, sloppy, disgusting, filthy fucking... And none of these people are actually based in the fucking UK. Legatum is based in the United Arab Emirates and their parent company is owned by a Maltese man and a New Zealander. And Discovery Communications Europe Limited is just a subsidiary of the American company Discovery Inc. Only half of the executives of the parent company are from the UK and Andrew Neal now lives in the south of France. Oh, and then we've got two shareholders in the parent company, each of them from the Conservative Party, of course, holding at least £50,000 each. One of them a chairman of a right-wing think tank. GB News, representing real, hard-working British people. Covering the issues that matter to you. The British people not the privileged metropolitan elite. No, not like the BBC or Channel 4. No. Even though their studio is based in central London. But we don't talk about that. Shh. So to explain the BBC, basically in this country, everyone on the left thinks it skews right and everyone on the right thinks it skews left, which is evidence enough to me that they do, they do a pretty good job at remaining balanced when it comes to the news. And seriously, you cannot beat this absolute banger. But I will admit that BBC comedy skews mostly left, which could probably could be a, a conspiracy conducted by the woke karate to, to poison our young minds with leftist values via the vehicle of lols. Or it could mean that the right are just shit at telling jokes. But when it comes to the news, a recent Reuters survey actually reveals that the BBC, if anything, has a slightly higher reach, 74 to 69% on the right than on the left. The BBC is also equally highly trusted among both the left and the right, 60%. The UK public are as likely to think woke is a compliment as an insult and most likely to say that they don't know what it means. Despite what you might read on Twitter, most have heard little to nothing about the phrases cancel culture or identity politics, despite huge surges in media coverage over the past five years. So in other words, Go outside and touch But keep dreaming, Andrew Neil. You will never be 
Tucker Carlson. You haven't got a little bow tie. You haven't been on Dancing with the Stars and busted some moves. And white supremacists haven't called you literally their greatest ally. Tucker Carlson's also allowed to lie his fucking ass off and Fox's lawyers will defend him by saying, given Mr. Carlson's reputation, any reasonable viewer arrives with an appropriate amount of skepticism about the statement he makes. The general tenor of the show should then inform a viewer that Carlson is not stating actual facts about the topics he discusses and is instead engaging in exaggeration and non-literal commentary. So he can lie and lie and lie and then defend himself from the repercussions of lying by leaning on his own reputation as a prolific liar. If Andrew Neil said something like wearing masks doesn't work or that the vaccine doesn't work or that lockdowns doesn't work or that the latest election was a fraud on national primetime TV in the UK, his Ofcom license would be gone straight away. The thing is, the UK's broadcast regulations for impartiality just water down the content so much that it sort of ends up being what you would get if you ordered Fox News from like wish.com. So after viewing figures dipped, we saw GB News lean into the word woke and the whole cancel culture talking point a lot more, but it's still losing that conservative Tucker spice. And that's the only type of spice that white people can endure. In the US, Fox News makes a profit and a lot of it. But in the UK, most news is subsidised by the government and doesn't make a profit. Murdoch has tried plenty of media startups which have failed, but he can afford to fail at whatever he tries his hand at. Once attempted to sell tablets to schools with textbooks on them, which had been written by News Corp, which failed, thank fuck. The Sun newspaper isn't even making any money anymore. In fact, he's valued it at zero because it made a 197 million pound loss, but he'll keep funding it because it's his mouthpiece and it's the same model for GB News. Billionaires have the capital available to fail. The last channel that started up in the UK operates with a 40 million pound annual loss and the investors know this, they, they know that it's probably likely to fail. They're they're not stupid, they just don't care. The failure will come if they fail to shift ideology. So if the steady ratings decline continues, they'll just move on to the next thing. If they really want to shift ideology in the young minds that will be voting in the future though, they need to be embracing social media, not concentrating on TV. They are uploading clips to social media, but they clearly haven't bothered hiring anyone who is any kind of expert in that field. Some of their YouTube videos seem to have built-in buffering. What? He would take the knee in uniform. And they don't seem to have realised that it's possible to choose your own thumbnail for YouTube videos, but please no one tell them that you can, because whenever YouTube chooses a thumbnail of Nigel Farage's face, it somehow manages just to pick the most best flattering frames. Sir Christopher Mayer! The good. Farage the Farage! Dilly dilly over! Quarantine push! I great crisis! Farage the Farage! None of the kids on TikTok want to watch clips of a rolling news channel. Do you think we're Thank being you. softened up for future lockdowns and COVID measures? I do, uh, yes. America is back. That's what Joe Biden said the day after the elections last November. Boring. This is how you need to be doing it. Hospitalizations are increasing exponentially as the Delta variant ravages the country. It's like communist China if they lock us inside. Who really cares if your grandma dies? We've withdrawn our troops from Afghanistan. No, that's a country, not a huge fan of Afghanistan. It was a really bad decision made by Joe Biden. No, the guy in Borat was Rudy Giuliani. Perhaps we'll end up in some sort of Black Mirror-esque dystopia in which there are only two TV channels, a 24-hour rolling news channel which is based on an algorithm entirely tailored to your interests but programmed to slowly shift your ideology by sprinkling propaganda, and the other channel a never-ending loop of James Corden monologues. Upon being left with no choice but to watch the rolling news propaganda, society delves into an anarcho-capitalist state in which public transport is replaced by 
20 lane McDonald's Happy Highways on which the only exits are placed near fast food restaurants. BP crude oil milkshakes are advertised as the cure. The cure to what? People scream, but before they have an answer, they are tied down as feeding tubes are forcibly administered. At the climax of public rebellion, during a violent protest, among the burning cars and rubble, one remaining billboard flickers to light. On it, a message reading, This uprising is sponsored by Audible. Capitalism's final boss, Jeff Bezos, rises up from behind the LED screen and bellows, Unionize this! He wields a gargantuan, cock-shaped rocket that shoots smaller, cock-shaped rocket missiles, screaming, Kiss my shiny, bold ball sack, as it rains dicks on the proletariat below. All buildings are destroyed apart from Amazon warehouses. The workers are forced to take shelter there. Eventually, the final three choices are instant death, starvation, or begin the workday once more. But what do we do, Moon Cat? What do we do? I don't know. I'm just here to tell you how fucking bad it is. And then sing you a little song. You are watching Moon Cat News, mixing comforting bullshit with a few half-truths curated updates just for you. We'll indoctrinate you and slowly change your worldview. It's now time for the headlines at two. Studies have revealed that your cats really love you and would not eat your face if you died alone at home. And did you know Obama takes a dream of grow? Breaking news, you were right from the start. Kanye West is massively overrated, and Piers Morgan is the state from a wet fart. Migrants will never be fully integrated. Should be sued for Mr. Blobby That motherfucker left you in therapy Drinking beer gives you the perfect body The Pfizer vaccine is just Cardi P I know you aren't drinking too much caffeine You're just borrowing energy from the future All facts, no printer Oreos are actually a great source of protein They grind up the fetuses and then eat them for dinner What's coming for you? They'll have you hypnotized The dress was black and blue They're just fucking with you The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes It's that George Orville Animal Factory 9 out of 5 The expansion pack system on The Sims is a scam They cancel Postman Pat just for being an ass man You don't know what the government has your doctor injecting Go downtown and stock up on ivermectin Squirrels are homophobic now Because they bury the nuts underground Our children's minds are poisoned by these new age celebs 6 9 is what you get if you want a Jojo Siwa off the dark web A wiser monkey, the mascot for Coco Pops Chocolate is toxic to monkeys Why did we breed chihuahuas into existence? They're clearly not very happy about it Why don't the depressants and stimulants in a vodka red bull cancel each other out? I'm not really playing this piano Yes, Netflix, we're all still watching. We're watching the world go insane. But we're here to save you. You've been watching Mooncat News. If you'd like to support this content, I have a Patreon on which I will be sharing a behind the scenes of this video. And Ableton just crashed on me again. And there's also a load of other secret videos and posts on there that you'll get access to as well. And um, you can DM me on there and give me video suggestions, early access to new videos, and other than that, you can also support me by visiting my Teespring store and copying some merch. And here's the thanks to my top tier patrons who I will shout out now! Senior Brainwash, Scott Howard, Hulk Willis Jr, Jimbo Rose Keeper, Sam Murdoch, Joey the Chance, Commander Jones, Mitzi Zugan, Monica Mead, Melissa Berry, Milk, Moonshine, Wildcat, Virginia, 3 Minute Man,
Bronx, Eva Knieva, the estate of the Ambudo, and Arena, Lola Bohemia, Carl Gonzalez, Sarah Marie McGee, All My Johnson, Laura Doherty, Quick, Stepper, MJ, Avon Gale, Music is Magic, Alice Matos, Smith of the New Westminster, Sean Mahoney, Nasi Kawita, Parisa, Mamma, <laughs> Parisa, Mamarian, Luke, Ashley Burke, Alex Victoria.